Well, uh, an iOS developer is a software developer engineer uh, who specialized in developing iOS applications specifically for Apple iOS operating system, which is used for iPhones, iPads, uh, iPod Touch. Um, yeah, basically this is what it is. Well, let's say if you want to become an iOS developer, then you must have a skill set like, uh, uh, well, first of, all, first of all, you should know the language, uh, the programming language it is, a Swift or Objective-C in our case. Also, uh, Apple iOS frameworks like uh, Foundation Framework, UI Kit or Swift UI, not or more slash, uh, core data, Sweep data or realm also networking, a lot of stuff. Um, also as a blue is a plus would be not to would, would be good to know the core animation framework uh, uh, for more specific and complex animation stuff. If you work with the girl, with the girl location or location services, you have to know core location or at least know that this exists uh, for access to hardware devices like a camera or uh, speakers or um, microphone, you have to know AV foundation, framework, etc. Also, you have to get known with the uh, ID Xcode. Xcode is an official ID for development application uh, for, let's say, i devices. Technically, this is all the devices from Apple and also Mac OS devices, uh, MacBooks itself. So with uh, Xcode, you can uh, keep all the life, cy life cycle of the application production, application development, including development, testing, debugging, mm -hmm. publishing to the App Store, etc. Yeah, also don't forget about the version control uh, to like uh, Git or SVN that really uh, must have stopped and basic understanding of design patterns like MVC, MVP, MVVM uh, also would be a good plus if you know or at least theoretically uh, know the idea of clean architecture concepts. Working with network is crucial for us because most of applications are client applications or applications which are communication which are communicate with uh, some servers um, through the API so data retrieving parsing uh, the basic knowledges of the rest are are really necessary debugging profiling some stuff like this are everyday routine in in in, uh, in the development because so, uh, it is always something happened and you have to deal with it. And the last but not least, it is uh, application deployment to App Store because this is the end goal of everything. You have to deploy to provide your application for other users or business needs, etc. There is a bunch of really interesting different technologies and tools related to iOS development specifically. But if I have to highlight some of them, then it's obviously UI kit for user interface development, Swift UI. Um, but for me specifically, Swift UI is not very really suitable because it's not cover all the needs I have uh, topically in uh, interface development. But it is really progressive and interesting way of uh, developing UI, which is not looks the same as the UI kit. Uh, I do like Core Data. It is our special framework for working with the database uh, solutions. Um, so if you need to have some local storages, Core Data for me is the first priority. The last stuff is the Realm or even Swift Data is something new for us. Uh, I think that the far we will go in development, the more and more popular Swift data will become. Swift Packet Manager, uh, Swift Packet Manager is, a, is a dependency management uh, tool which allow us more easily uh, integrate some third-party libraries in the projects. Because previously we, had, we still had uh, some other stuff like, for example, 
Cocoa uh, Pods, but Swift Package Manager is much easier and understandable for us. Uh, I do like Eric Swift, it's an reactive framework. Um, from the SVN, I prefer, from the Git more specifically, I prefer Bitbucket service. And of course, six code, test flight, and playground is something that I do like in this. Well, short answer is yes. Uh, Let's say if developer want to stay in the field of mobile applications, uh, he can pick up Kotlin, for example, for Android development, or even contribute to some cross-platform solutions like Flutter or React Native. Um, but Swift itself uh, have a variety of applications, so it is suitable for backend development, uh, especially with frameworks like Swift, Neo, or Kitura, also, it is suitable for machine learning with its CoreML or, or even PyTorch, I believe, and TensorFlow, which also allow you to use Swift. Um, even more, once I was working with a cool guy, his name is Pimstock. So he was an architect, uh, architecture, uh, software architecture at the startup related to the Internet of Things. So it was an IoT uh, startup. And he told me that they were developing a server side fully on Swift. So it is it is possible. But honestly, even more, uh, fundamental knowledges of software development, uh, let's say, are applicable across various domains. So mm, therefore, while iOS developers may have specializations or let's say specialized knowledges uh, in Apple, the skill set itself can be uh, used for other uh, projects outside of the iOS development, which is absolutely true. Definitely, there, there is a lot of challenges when you try to balance between design requirements and technical implementation, but let's say the first of all balance between this stuff is really important it it basically can determine the successful of your product and uh, to solve this it it should involve collaboration between design and development teams it requires strong communication trust uh, and let's say understanding of points of view of each other uh, well, for example, um, at least this is how I do that. Uh, I'm working with designers from the very beginning. On every stage of uh, design, we have cross meetings. So like we are gathering and discussing some stuff. They tell me what they, let's say, uh, decided to bring to the project to solve some business decisions, to solve some business uh, needs, uh, cover some business needs. And uh, we are talking together. I give them my opinion on how complex it will be, if it is it suitable or even more, if we are ongoing in development, so I can also um, give them my uh, point of view about what complexity can be from our side by their decisions. So it is really important to have this communication. Sometimes it's hard to explain some boundaries from this to that, uh, from I mean, from this side to that side. Uh, but it's really important to stay uh, and work as a team and uh, be productive. Um, otherwise, it can really easily become a battle, like a uh, tug of war. Firstly, it is really important to define if product aligns with the business goals. So if it is, then it's already successful. Let's say like this. But after that, it's all about metric parameters like um, monetization, usage, retention, performance of application, ratings on an app store, users engagement. So like uh, how more, how, if it, are the users continue to use or uh, are the new users come through the time to this product? And uh, of course, if you want to stay competitive and have, uh, let's say, healthy application, 
um, you have to work with these metrics. You have to pay attention and uh, do what it's need to increase all these parameters. Yeah, backward compatibility is really a common challenge for developers. Uh, IOS is not something specific or innovative in this field. So we are use mostly the same strategies like uh, uh, conditional combination, fallbacks, uh, progressive enhancement. Uh, st step by step, it will looks like um, we have to decide what is the minimal uh, iOS version we're going to support, uh, decide which devices will be supported like uh, this is something for the marketing team, let's say we need to discover uh, what is the most suitable and usable devices for our product. And uh, also if there are any specific technologies that need to be used, uh, we should also take this into account. Uh, and well, all this information can be gathered, we can at least optimize development processes and life cycle of the product itself. First of all, software development is really a dynamic industry. Um, the speed with which knowledges, which we, which are cured knowledges, loses relevance is really unbelievable. And I can remember that when I switched from Objective C to Swift first time, I feel like it already a game changer for iOS development in many ways. But since this, since that time, now we have augmented reality, machine learning. But even more, simple stuff like Swift Package Manager makes a deal with the third-party libraries much simpler. And nowadays we have uh, Swift UI, something new, uh, Swift Data, something is also that will, I believe, change the way how we work with the uh, local storages. Um, and everything in, in the software development constantly changes. So it's, let's say, more rhetorical question. It is always something change from day to day. Honestly, I have no preference, preference source. Like, um, I just have no one. But if I need to highlight some of them, then uh, it would be a WWDC sessions. Uh, also, Apple documentation, uh, books, specific books mostly, and of course, blogs and vlogs. Blogs and vlogs are something that you can easily get, uh, really uh, compressed information in a short amount of time. Oh, and by the way, better program also is something that can give you a lot of knowledges from the new perspective of technologies. Well, you know, after all, it's really important to, let's say, cultivate the mindset of continuous learning. Uh, as I said, software development is really dynamic industry. So if you have, mm, you have to be curious, you have to explore, explore uh, new technologies, you have to keep up with the new changes. If you want to keep, if you want to be, um, Cancun, this is, this is my scat. And please don't forget to have a fun. Well, first of all, let's say our days are appearance of metal networks like ChatGPT or Copilots already influenced at software development processes in many ways. And now integration of machine learning will will continue, it will keep up. Uh, this is the first. Uh, also, for example, in iOS Vision OS is the, let's say it's a second breath for augmented reality. Potentially, it can also change the way we look at applications, at our traditional applications on the mobile phones. Uh, Swift itself will continue to evolve. Uh, as a result, we will have more and more feature performance improvements and 
basically new tool like a Swift UI or Swift data, etc., for developers. Well, first of all, be patient. Uh, don't hang up on difficult topics. It's better to come back to them after a while. Um, find someone who you can share your knowledge with. Maybe it will be a beginner or mature developer. Uh, also, please don't look for truth in ch on ChatGPT or Stack Overflow. Please think critically. Um, try to find some mentor, uh, not necessary from a iOS development field, but somebody who again can explain things abstractly. Like because, as I said. Uh, their skill sets are really applicable for different domains of software development. Uh, write, write and write code. This this will help you gain experience. Knowledge just have a little value without experience. And the least, but I think it is really most important, is to have a farm.